What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm going to recap the preseason matchup between the New York Giants and the New England Patriots. The Patriots finished the preseason at 3-0. The New York Giants finished the preseason at 0-3. And what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. So anybody watching this video, don't care, get carried away with the preseason record. Uh, I, I don't. I know I have to constantly remind some of you guys that in 2019, the Giants went 4-0 in the preseason. They went 5-11 in the regular season. The Cleveland Browns went 4-0 in the preseason one year. They went 0-16 in the regular season. The same can be said for the Detroit Lions. So in terms of the preseason record, it means absolutely nothing to me and and as I always say the the best news that came out of this game outside of I think a small injury to Evan Ingram but mm, from what it looked like it will not be anything serious he went off on his own power it didn't look like he had any, any hitch in his step I think Evan Ingram will be playing week one there were no major injuries in this football game or at least as of now from what I've heard for the New York Giants so that's the best bit of news for the Giants in this game we got out healthy Daniel Jones is ready to go week one none of the offensive linemen uh, at least from what I know are hurt none of the key defensive players went down either so that's the first bit of very good news in this football game and the Giants went down by a final score of 22 20 if you want to look at it in terms of the stars the New York Giants won the first half seven to six with a late touchdown from Daniel Jones we'll talk more about Daniel Jones's performance throughout this video I, I thought we should have scored a lot more points in the first half and I guess that you can look at that as either a positive or a negative that we left points on the board that just certainly shouldn't have been uh you can make a strong argument that the New York Giants should have led 21-6 at the half Darius Slayton dropped a huge key pass on a third and 13 where Daniel Jones arguably made his best throw of the day outside of the touchdown to Caden Smith which was beautiful uh into a tight window on a third and 13 where he was getting hit as he threw uh, I thought that was a great throw by Jones but Darius Slayton dropped it would have been of a 16 or 17 yard gain and certainly would have put us in field goal range and then of course Daniel Jones is you know lone horrible decision he made another questionable pass that could have been picked off it was really good coverage but the interception on the one yard line just cannot happen in the regular season that is a horrible decision by daniel jones now the play call is certainly questionable but my thought process during the game it was a third and goal from the half yard line i think that the new york giants and jason garrett we're looking at it as something to try to work on. It's preseason. It's almost like practice. In a regular season game, I think the New York Giants tried to run the football there at third and goal at the half-yard line. If they don't get it, they probably run the ball again. But knowing that Daniel Jones and this offense struggled last year in the red zone, Jones had, I think, only five red zone touchdown passes all of last year and two interceptions, they probably viewed it as a good opportunity to try to punch the ball in the end zone. And Daniel Jones made an atrocious throw against his body where he was looking for Evan Ingram. Ingram actually had some separation, but the throw was just way off the mark and that cannot happen uh you think back to the first game last year against the Pittsburgh Steelers very reminiscent of that not that the throw was but they were deep in enemy territory on the three or four yard line with a chance to tie the football game and that kind you know then the, then everything went off the rails after that and that was a horrible decision by Daniel Jones outside of that which you know in a regular season game if he makes a decision like that it's hard to say outside of that because decisions like that cost your football games Daniel Jones looked really good the touchdown pass to Caden Smith was as good of a throw as you could make uh, you know, I said that, and I said you saw the ups and downs of Daniel Jones in this football game, and you see why fans see the potential in this quarterback. Not every quarterback, I can assure you, in the NFL can make that throw that he made to Caden Smith, but by the same token, there are also several quarterbacks in the NFL that are smart enough not to attempt the throw that he did to Evan Ingram. I'm not going to get too bent out of shape. It's preseason, just like I didn't get too high with the touchdown. I didn't get too high, uh, too low, rather, with the turnover. But in a regular season game, if the New York Giants and Daniel Jones plans to you know, win 9 or 10 games this year, things like that cannot happen. A franchise quarterback cannot make decisions like that. So hopefully, Joe Judge, Jason Garrett, and the New York Giants use that as a teaching opportunity for Daniel Jones. In terms of Jones overall in this game, I think he looks solid, very solid outside of that one. I have the stats right here. Let me pull them up. Outside of that one horrible decision, he made another pass, like I said, that could have nearly been picked off. But overall, Jones, I mean, he was 17-22. to 22. You could even make an argument, had Evan Ingram got that extra half yard, we're not even talking about the interception, he would have been 17 uh, for 21 uh, you know with only four incompletions and two touchdowns and no picks so I think overall outside of the one atrocious decision Jones looked strong and he got out healthy so 
I'll take that as a positive. The biggest negative in this game was the offensive line and the guy that we're depending on on the blind side for Daniel Jones, and that's Andrew Thomas, plain and simple. Andrew Thomas is a guy that I've stood up for. He's a guy that I have a lot of high hopes for. I'm not going to let tonight's performance deter me from thinking he's going to take a mega step up this year, but I'd be lying to you if I wasn't very disappointed in Andrew Thomas's performance tonight and maybe, you know, left it a little bit, uh, I guess, less confident going into the year. Andrew Thomas was getting beat left and right. Uh, he let up a sack. He was responsible for another sack that he wasn't credited for, where and, uh, Daniel Jones had to step up in the pocket. He got rocked. He got called for a holding penalty. Andrew Thomas was the worst player in the football field tonight. And I'd say Darius Slayton was pretty bad as well with that key drop, and he had a key um, uh, penalty as well. So I think both of those players played very poorly. Uh, the offensive line we know going in is going to be a major question mark for this football team. And if we want a surprise, they got to play a lot better in terms of pass protection than they did tonight. Uh, that was obviously the biggest negative. Outside of that, there weren't a lot of negatives, but that's the one thing that we're really concerned about going into the uh, start of the regular season. So I definitely understand fans leaving tonight's game being a little bit underwhelmed due to the fact that the offense line did what they did and due to the fact that even though Daniel Jones definitely showed a lot of great things, still made that one boneheaded play. Uh, if we're going to win football games, he can't have that one boneheaded play. He did some great things in this game, though. And again, I'm going to be optimistic. And I'm going to say to myself, hopefully Jones going into year three has a lot less plays like that in the regular season. And he takes that as a learning opportunity. And we'll see how he does in the regular season. I'm going to be as fair as I can with this offense this year. And I'm going to give him three, four, five weeks to get their bearings and hopefully start to push things forward. But we need to know by year's end if this offensive line and this quarterback are starting to progress so i think those were some of the negatives um in terms of the positives i thought we ran the ball pretty effectively even though the first teamers not so much when you look at the final stat line brightwell who actually got some time with the first team which i thought was interesting maybe gary brightwell will in fact make this team you didn't see Corey clement enter the game until the second half but one can argue maybe the new york giants saw enough out of Corey clement it remains to be seen. We'll have to wait and see. And maybe the New York Giants go with five running backs for all that we know. But the starters didn't run the ball that well when you just look at the statistics. Uh, Brightwell had four carries for 10 yards. who played a little bit with the first team. Devontae Booker only seven for 14, averaging two yards a carry. Um, out, you know, Obviously, Penny had a great game and Clement had a great game. But that was more with the second and third unit defensively for the New England Patriots. I thought they did good, though, in terms of the pre-stat motion, in terms of running the football. They used Darius Slayton on an end around. I thought that was a good play call. It seemed like they got a, you know somewhat creative with the running game. And a lot of people are going to complain about the play calling. Again, I think it's situational. I think it's preseason. You're not going to show the full playbook. And I know some people may be discouraged by the lack of big plays in this football game. And we'll see what the New York Giants got coming out week one. I'm not going to evaluate the play calling um, or even the majority of the offensive production based off a preseason game. If you're a good offensive coordinator, you're not going to show the whole playbook. Not to mention you're missing your biggest playmakers, obviously, would take Juan Barkley and Kenny Galladay. But overall, I thought Jones had a pretty strong performance. I thought the run blocking was at least satisfactory for the first unit offensive line. Andrew Thomas was a huge negative in terms of the pass protection. The defense was terrific in the first half. And really, if I'm being honest with you, that's all I really care about. Julian Love, I want to give him a quick shout out. Had a great pass breakup, made a great tackle in special teams. And I really hope that Julian Love finds a way to get on the football field for the New York Giants this year. I think he's going to have a really good year. But the play of the game defensively, make no mistake about it, was Blake Martinez. Blake Martinez, and it was a great throw by Cam Newton. It was initially caught. Martinez read the wide receiver at his back to the quarterback, was able to get his hand in one-armed it and ripped it out and somehow came up with a miraculous interception that was the play of the game but overall the defense played well and it was nice to see lorenzo carter get a sack coming off the achilles injury he looked pretty good trent harris who's really fighting to make this team albeit a coverage sack still got a sack i think that helps his cause to potentially make this team as well dexter lawrence had a sack i thought Radarius williams was decent in coverage as well and we'll see who ultimately ends up making this football team. Much like Clement, you know, I know one guy that a lot of Giants fans are rooting for to make this team. They didn't really use, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, David Sills until the third quarter. You saw Dante Pettis get some exposure with the first team. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means the New York Giants have Pettis above him or beneath him. Maybe they wanted to see him with the first team, but we didn't get to see Sills with Jones in a game this year. You didn't get to see, and obviously you didn't get to see him with the first two because he didn't because Daniel Jones didn't play. So I don't know if that's hinting towards something that the Giants have Pettis above him on the depth chart. That remains to be seen. The final cuts will be in two days. And your guess is as good as mine. You know, I went into this game 
team suggesting that I think Ross will be cut because the best ability is availability. He hasn't played. I thought Brightwell would make the team if they only go with four running backs over Clement due to the fact that we drafted him. Uh, and Brightwell did get more, uh, got some time, which is more than what Clement got with the first team offense. But I don't know what that ultimately will mean in terms of the final cuts for the New York Giants. The defense, I mean, we know what we're going to get with this defense this year. This is going to be a top 10 defense. This defense is going to be very good. I like the aggressive nature. Another play I wanted to point out from Martinez, and more so Patrick Graham, was a great design blitz on the first or second drive for the Patriots where he uh, attacked the A-gap. I thought that was a, a plus as well uh, from Blake Martinez. But overall, the defense was stout. We know we're going to get that from them this year. I'm not too concerned with the defense. I think we'll be a very good unit. It's the offense that you worry about, and the offensive line continues to be a major question mark. Andrew Thomas cannot play that way. In the first preseason game, the one thing I keep noticing from Andrew Thomas in this game, he kept letting the edge rusher set the edge, turn the edge. In the first game, it was very similar for me. Only uh, Thomas was able to recover, but it still looked like he was getting beat off the edge. I don't know. It looks like he's a little slow to react. That needs to improve going into the season. The other thing I wanted to point out was Nate Solder today actually started on the right side and Matt Parrott came in later I think it was relatively early and Solder hasn't played all preseason maybe they wanted to get him some exposure with the first team maybe it means nothing but Solder actually got the cold to start the game on the right side which I thought was interesting as well we'll see what the New York Giants ultimately decide to do with this roster again not going to get too high not going to get too low there's pros and cons to take out of the game Willis of course with the nice touchdown at the end Really nice feel-good story there. He had a great preseason. Maybe he makes the practice squad. We'll have to wait and see what that. Uh, Glennon, whatever. He's the backup quarterback. Showed some good, showed some bad. Missed some throws um, and hit some big throws as well, uh, including that Hail Mary. So we'll see how it all plays out, guys. Looking forward to two weeks from now, the start of the regular season. I'll probably be live tomorrow uh, to do my daily recap with you guys. Any questions that you guys may have going into the season, recap the preseason game. Talk about Jones, everything else. I know you guys love the live streams, as do I. Looking forward to that tomorrow, probably around midday, 2, 3 o'clock, whatever it may be. But thank you guys for being the best supporters on YouTube. And as always, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.